In today's video, we will assemble a rare model of a self-prepared artillery unit from the USSR. We will be assembling the tracks from photo aged parts, and I will explain why working with them can be challenging in 172 scale. Let's get started. This model of the 81 tank was produced by Uni Models company. The kits from this company have an average quality. In my previous projects, I encountered issues where some parts didn't fit properly, and there were significant problems with assembling the chassis. Well, in this project, I'll once again be dealing with the dreadful chassis designed by the creator of the wicker tank. As you can see, in this kit the number of parts is roughly similar to the T26 tank, what I assembled in a few videos ago. To be brief, this self prepared artillery unit is based on the T26 tank. They have almost identical hulls and chassis. However, unlike the T26, this tank is equipped with a 76mm gun. But let me tell you sad story of the creator of this tank. During the Stalinist era in 1936, Pavel Sachintov, the author of this tank, was reported, leading to his arrest. In 1937, he was executed, and all of his development, including the self-propelled unit 81, were eliminated. I used the word tank because self-propelled unit is too long for me. There are not many parts in these kits, but before assembling the model, I needed to separate the parts from the plastic sprue, which is what I started doing. The next step is cleaning parts of any excess material. For this, I use a modeling knife. It must be sharp to easily remove the excess parts without damaging the component. Now the parts are ready for assemble, and I need to glue them together using super glue. I am proud to show you my recent purchase of glue with a brush applicator. This glue is of higher quality and more convenient to use it with the I used before. Now my model will not be completed covered with glue. Overall, the tank hull is well made, and all parts fit together nicely, with no issues during assembly. However, it will be strange if model went together entirely without any hitches, would it? After all, we are accustomed to facing challenges. So, the protection for the tank chassis caused me a lot of trouble. It didn't fit together quite right. And I had to use a modeling knife to modify the parts to the required state. As you may have noticed, I assembled the turret of this self propelled unit off camera. There were some issues with it and I had to trim it slightly to make it fit properly. After that, I moved on to attaching detail to the rear of the tank. I attached the engine grill, the air intake system and the exhaust pipe. Next, I turned my attention to the front of the tank. I attached the driver's hitch and worked on the photo etching for the turret. Most of the work with photo etching will be done off camera, because working with photo etching in 172 scales can be very challenging. Then I added a few more photo etched details. Now my 81 have a shovel and an X. They are decently made, but not perfect. Now I have to tackle my least favorite parts of this tank, which is the chassis and photo etched tracks. Assembling the wicker system chassis is a very challenging task. They have a lot of tiny parts that don't want to fit together perfectly. Additionally, assembling them on camera is not feasible. So I'll only show you a few frames of what I was able to capture. After the tank chassis was assembled, I began working on photo etched tracks. Initially, you won't encounter difficulties. The tracks are easy to assemble and understand. But when it comes to attaching them, they start causing a problem. My problem was the photo etch tracks turned out to be rigid. Because of this, a part of the chassis they attach from tank hull, and I had to replace some parts with metal pins to avoid such issues in the future. I had a few pieces of the track left, which I used to create additional armor for the front of the tank. Logically, I should have attached these pieces to the left to protect the driver, but I didn't have enough tracks left. 
So I had to attach them in the center to avoid spoiling the tank appearance. Now our tank is assembled. The photo agent part is in place and I wanted to use green stuff to add variety to the tank appearance and to cover up some of the assembly mistakes I made. With the green stuff I created weld seams. They may look large, but after weathering the result will be much better. After correcting all my mistakes, it was time to make a few canvas covers, pouches and add a small tarpaulin to the tank turret. For this I used green stuff again, but I added more yellow to make it more pliable. This way I could shape the tarpaulin as needed without ruining it. When working with the green stuff it's important to use water actively, otherwise it can stick to the table or your tools forcing you to start over. Fortunately everything went smoothly and the large tarpaulin fit perfectly on the corner of the tank turret. After the large tarpaulin I decided to make a smaller tarpaulin and a small bag. This addition would add some extra detail and make the model more interesting. Creating these bags is quite simple. Then I decided to include a special lock that tank crew use when their tank gets stuck in mud. They attach the lock to the tank tracks to help it get out of my trap. I took a piece of bamboo stick and used my modeling knife to add texture to it. To attach the lock I use a thin wire cable. And I can say I am satisfying with the assembly result. As I didn't expect anything extraordinary from my less than perfect skills and $5 modeling kit. Now it's time to move on to painting. This time we are creating a winter tank. So the painting process will be more complex than I am used to. But first we need to prime the model. And I don't think I need to explain why. The first layer of course is a khaki color. Because this self propelled unit wasn't originally in winter camouflage. But was painting with it later. After applying the base khaki color. I thought it would be nice to use dry brushing technique to address spots on the top of the hacky. Even if I make a mistake, the winter camouflage will hide it. Yes, I messed up with model a bit while trying to use a solvent, but using the dry brushing technique was not a mistake. I was satisfied with the result. Now it's time to paint in the tank in winter camouflage. I apply the winter camouflage in a way that suggests it's not a special camouflage paint, but razor that the crew found. That's why I didn't use pure white for a winter camouflage. I deliberately made the color more grey, because I thought it would make the self propelled unit look more interesting. Leaving the camouflage as it is, I decided to pay attention to various details. I painted the canvas covers and clothes, the shawl the X and of course the lock on the side of the tank. This time I painted the canvas cover even more straightforwardly than before. I simply painted it in a dark base color and then I used the dry brushing technique. It seems to me that the canvas cover now look old and dirty enough, with some areas yellowed by time, weather condition and various debris. I treated the lock the same way as the canvas cover. After that I worked on the exhaust pipe. This time it turned out much better than previous, thanks again to the dry brushing technique. It was straightforward. I used it for color and achieved this result. I think it's not perfect but good result for 172 scale. After the exhaust pipe I returned to the canvas cover, because it had lost a lot of its color after drying. I wanted to add more warmth to it which might affect the realism of the combat vehicle, but I am not worried about it, because I consider dioramas may be art and everyone does it as they see fit. Now I decided to paint some small detail and weather the white paint a bit. Again I used the dry brushing technique and the result turned out well. Now the tank is ready for weathering and you may ask, hey why didn't you show how you paint these cool photo HE tracks? And I will answer. I added a bit of rust and some shiny paint. And that's it. I currently see no point in adding anything more to the almost flat tracks without any significant raised part. Now it's time to weathering. And we getting into the magic. 
I truly believe that weathering a scale model is like performing magic. Turning even the most basic work into something worthwhile. To begin I created a palette of several oil paints color. Then I applied a few dots using a brush. These colors were then carefully blended and streaked across the surface, creating dirty streaks and making the white paint appear very dirty, just as I wanted. The same process was done for the other parts of the tank. Only after this was the final trick used, black oil paint, which create pleasant shadow around all the protruding parts of the vehicle. When this stage was complete, I decided that the work on the tank was done. The remaining task as applying dirt and additional weathering will be done when I create the diorama in next video. Am I satisfied with the work done? More no than yes. I have a lot of issues with this kit. It's inconvenient to assemble with very small parts that constantly want to slip out of your hand. And of course the quality of some parts leave much be desired. I had to do a lot of work with knife and file. The footage tracks also didn't leave the best impression on this project. I made many mistakes while working with them and now they are not aligned correctly. Fortunately this doesn't severely impact the overall appearance of the work. Now this video is coming to an end. Give me a like, subscribe if you enjoy my content and don't subscribe if you don't enjoy my content. And of course you can support me with a nice comment. And if you want to support the channel's development, subscribing to my Patreon would mean a lot to me. Now I wish you all a great day. It was no quality. Goodbye.